We made it. We made it. That's for the six teams that have, yes, made it to the playoffs. Six out of 12. Half the league is happy right now. Half the league is sad. And actually, if we were going to break that half down, a third of the league is probably still fuming and potentially won't even watch this video out of pure um, just anger, disappointment, resentment, jealousy, um, vitriol, just you name it. And it, if it's a synonym of just those words, then it's going to fit in this situation right now for the teams. And you know, I'm referencing, I'm talking about our beloved commission, nobody. And um, Big Ant, you know, whatever you want to call him this week, Big Ant. I can't, I, if, I haven't seen if he's made a name change or not. Last time I checked, he was still the sixth man as of just a wee bit hours ago. So, well, I don't think that's changed. We're going to keep calling him Big Ant. But those guys, I know they're feeling upset right now due to the fact that, <clears throat> you know, they missed the playoffs. And unfortunately, the asshole that you're looking at right now actually made the playoffs. So, my bad guys, it was nothing personal. Um, just business, just business, as the kids would say. But right now, we're just we're here to talk a little bit about last week. We're gonna go forward a little bit. My predictions last week didn't look so didn't look so bad. I, I think I went four and two. Called myself winning. Called Big Ant winning. Called um, Nelson Cruz and winning. Didn't call Ahar to lose, and he kind of did that to me right there. Spoke to the one, saw one on one in person right there at that door today. As who's bringing me over a splendiferous. Uh, Florida Gators book right there, just a myriad of faux talks for those Gator fans out there. Let me just bring that to you right now. I mean, we just got to say, I mean, when you talk Gator lore, I mean, you're talking about some of the greats right here. Oh, my God, look. Herb. Urban. Love it. Oh, look. Oh, God. Quite possibly one of the most underrated quarterbacks in Florida history, Chris Leak. And once again, this is the small baby. So, Ahar, much love to you, my man. Much love to you. Not only much love to you from me, but much love to you from our jersey partner this week of the Colorado Rockies. Chuck Nasty. We talking about Charlie Blackman up in this house. Charlie Blackman, gotta show you love, help get me into the playoffs. Really, really dig it. Um, let's go ahead. Let's talk about some teams that uh, did not make the playoffs. We don't have to talk about it last week anymore. You know, we're not gonna keep uh, crushing those folks right there, but. Uh, did Benson and uh, he didn't he didn't live up to his end code he didn't win like I predicted and um, uh, that's about all we got Billy Billy pulled out a dub when I didn't expect a, a Billy dub right there unfortunately but anyways neither here nor there um, moving on to this upcoming week first we're gonna start off with the constellation bracket we're gonna get those guys out of the way um, and this week in the Constellation Brag, and I'm only going to make predictions, but I'm going to tell these guys some things that I really enjoyed about them this year. This might be one of the final times we talk about these teams being the Constellation. They might just get one more matchup preview, and uh, this could be it. So let's go ahead. Let's dole out some uh, just some battle boys, some I love you, some things like that. Um, just real positivity around here because that's all I'm about. And I know there's a glare right here, folks. I really do apologize for that. Um, let's see if I just stick my hand right here. Wait, right here. I'm just going to stick my hand right here. We got this one skylight right there put in, but if I put my hand right here, it's going to eliminate it. So let's see how this works out for the duration of the video. Uh, let's start with 12. Let's start with Steed. Steed, I, would, I, I just love your banter that you bring to the league. I love your uh, love of baseball and especially the Braves, man. You know, it's cool hearing about you signing some dingers out there on the softball field. It's cool you taking pictures, throwing it with your pops. You know, I really love your dedication to just all things Bravos, even though you're still up in uh, – El uh, Toronto, as the French would say. So that's what I really dig about you. And the team you're going up against this week, B Green. I mean, it's B Green. I fucking love. I just love everything about B Green. Obviously, so we won't say anything else there. B Green. But this week, B Green, I'm not. You're not going to feel as much love because I'm predicting Steve to win. I think Austin's going to send B Green out just on a low level to just to end his year. Just let him know how how miserably he's disappointed from going to the division leader league leader just at the seven week point to where he is now losing in the first round of the consolation bracket to the worst team in the league so be green i want you to just breathe that in just drink it in right there because that's a loss for you man that's just a loss on the season time to go back to the drum board and reassess how you uh did some business this year so steed kudos to you for picking up a dub before your season totally ends on a low note next up um tickles versus cruising cody uh, tickles, man. 
I love that you're 100% all the damn time at everything, dude. Whether it's on the fantasy, being the first one to message Ben and get the league started, be like, Ben, it's, it's February 15th, man. The league's been up on Yahoo for about six hours now. Why? Well, I mean, you got it started. You know, I love that. Love when we're out there throwing the ball or doing anything in the yard. You're not. You're fucking playing to win, bro. You're whipping that shit around. I don't give a shit what other people say. Shit is what other people say. I like that you're going to hum it in there. Doesn't bother me none. We're playing home run derby. We're all playing to win. We're throwing the ball around, you know? Let's throw the ball around, you know? Let's be men. Let's not be women, all right? Let's not be women. But anyways, that's what I dig about Jaycock. Cruz and Cody, I like that, you know, we got the same little uh, after-school activities going on. You know what I'm talking about. I love that you dig some Jags. Obviously, we've got to love a little Jig Jaguars action. Let me scoot back a little bit. There we go. I'm digging that. There's my hand all up in your screen the entire time, blocking a little... WWE Monday Night Raw in the background. I think we got Becky Lynch in the ring. Ooh, the man. Um, Cruz Cody dig that. But you know, most of all, I dig that you missed the playoffs this year. We're going to have a new champion in the league. The man that's beat me and knocked me out of the playoffs two consecutive seasons. Uh, I'm glad to see that you did not make the playoffs. That's all I can... That's that's my big thing that I like about you. But I, another thing I don't like about you, though, is that you're not picking up a dub this week. That's something I don't like about your team, to pick up a victory. You're going to enjoy the Cruz out there in Miami... You know, bouncing, fucking bouncing around in the ocean. You know, doing who knows what when it's rainy or stormy or bad weathery. Just sitting inside, chilling, drinking on some beverages while you're chilling at the kids camp. God dang, gotta love some kids camp on a cruise, man. Uh, possibly eating a felonious amount of food at a uh, buffet. You know, fine dining late at night, eating a just myriad of delicious entrees, range from lobster to steak to to kale salads, things that are quite delicious, you know, lemon bisque, you know, things that high-class people would enjoy, such as yourself and I, and most of the league around these parts. So, Cruz and Cody, that's what I like about you, and you're not picking up a dub, because Jay Cock is picking up a dub this week, and boy, is my arm is hurting, so I'm just going to have to sit like this. Let's see, let's, oh, shoot, man, the cameraman's about to get fired up in this mug. That didn't help things much, but we're going to have to deal with it like it is, so... Anyways, that's it for the consolation bracket. Uh, next week, we'll talk a little bit more about the two teams that had a bye. And, you know, I'm referencing 7th and 8th. That would be nobody and Big Ant. So Big Ant and, and uh, Big Benny Boy, you'll be hearing some kudos from me about some things I dig about you guys next week. Don't feel any heart just because you're good and got a bye. Uh, moving on to the, to the bracket that people are really looking at this week. Who's going to be the league champ? Who's going to just reach and claw... And grab that title this year because it's not going to be Cody. Uh, we've got six teams vying for those positions. So I'm going to talk about each six of them real quick. Then we're going to break it down the two matchups that we have along with the buys. Number one overall seed, D Hart. On this podcast, Vigicast, each week, I just repeat. I was just a parrot. Bad, bad hit. Great hitting. Great hitting. He's two dudes on his team lead the league in home runs, tied for the league at 43 dingers. Christian Yelich robbed my man Garrett Cole of the victory this week with a ninth inning dinger off of Roberto Azuna. Appreciate it, Azuna, you piece of garbage. Um, anyways, you won't hold anything against you right there. But, dude, your team pitched their arses off in the month of August, and I was really impressed. Jack Flaherty has been a rock solid stud for your team, and somebody that really helped you. Trevor Bauer has just totally crapped on himself since coming to Cincinnati, but I would just like to say everything else about your squad has just been kind of click dicking, other than the fact you didn't reach your uh, innings limit two weeks ago against Austin, but we don't really care so much about that. We can move past that, seeing as how you really had the number one seed locked up. So number one, kudos to you. Way to collect some money. Um, if anyone was going to get it in the top six, I guess if it wasn't me, I'm glad it's you. Uh, one of my boys deep, deep way back. So over here drafting a fantasy football team just a week ago, um, there was a fee for that. I don't know if you're aware of that, just like Buffalo Wild Wings and Taco Mac has a fee. Um, you can just Venmo me $25 for providing you food, beverages, and uh, wonderful Wi-Fi internet throughout the evening. So that's why that's Venmo Will-Alexander at Venmo. Uh, moving forward, though, the second overall team, Behan, the man I saw today, talked to today, gifted me, bestowed upon me such a wonderful book. Second overall is just a real big kick in the kick in the teeth if we're going to keep it clean for the children that watch these videos. But kick in the teeth because I, I you know, I went in and I even said on this video last week, what a bitch. He's about to he's about to uh, he's about to come back and be the champion his first season back out of retirement, kind of like MJ was when he came back, um, just helping just win titles, just what he does. But he hasn't won a title. He's not out of winning a title, just not a regular season title. 
which, you know, that, that doesn't really matter. I mean, it counts for some cash, but in the grand scheme of things, I, who, was the, who was the regular season last champ last year and two years ago? Uh, there you go, Stab Dog. There's your question of the week. Who in our league was the uh, league regular season champion the past two seasons? Give me those answers, and uh, we'll see where it goes from there. It might be prizes. Door prizes always awarded. Apparently, Slack board is blowing up right now. Um, with uh, the response from Yahoo, I can't wait to read it here as I'm done creating this video for us this week. Number three overall seed, Billy Baseball. Billy Dan Baseball rocks in the number three seed, finished the season strong. Uh, pitching is really doing some work for him. Strasburg was a great addition, rocked the Marlins on Saturday, kind of helped. Um, even though Savdog did have that complete game shutout no-hitter from Verlander, didn't matter. Uh, Billy Baseball still was able to prevail, which is great pitching. Yu Darvish has been phenomenal. Uh, Cole Hamill's coming back the other day from paternity leave. He was phenomenal. Walker Buehler has been great most of the season, all season long for that matter. I like Walker Buehler. I know a lot of us do out there as well. Hitting. Aaron Judge is finally realizing he's supposed to hit the ball over the fence, not just roll it to the fence for a C and I single every time. That's been nice to see for his team as well. Going forward, I wouldn't like to see his team produce quite as well, seeing as how we're playing against each other this week. But that's what I got to say about the three seed, four seed overall. Sab dog really thought year the Sab would have that would end with higher than a four seed going into the playoffs. But you've got some guys that are really healthy right now. Everybody on your team seems to be pitching pretty dang well. Stroh Daddy, um, Verlander, Scherz Daddy, uh, Degrom. Your relievers are doing great. I can't find much to say other than you know Justin May. Hope you're okay after you took that. Liner off the dome the other day. Feel free to use that rhyme later. Anyways, Savdog being the four seed, you should be pretty thrilled with that. Hashtag thrilled. Because that's better than you've ever done in any season combined. I don't, that's just making the playoffs for you. Just, you're going to move out of the junk bracket next year. We're proud of you for that one. Who's going to take your spot in there is up for grabs between a few contenders. Overall, though, good, good job on the season, finishing the fourth. Number five seed, Ryan Mart. Thought you were one of the best teams all season long. I really expect you to just dominate this week, beat Savdog in the 4-5 uh, matchup. I like your offense. Jordan Alvarez is not going to be in a slump all season long. Alex Bregman is still a stud. You've got offense just here, 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 and here. Eduardo Escobar, that trade you made with Jaycock is really looking to pay dividends for you. So, overall... I'm a little worried about that team. Even though we, we went and had to head a couple weeks ago, I'm still a little worried about you, but that's for somebody in the next round to worry about. We wouldn't see each other till the World Series. And number six seed thrills, I just like the fact that I'm the manager of that team and I made the playoffs. And I can thank any Yahoo playoff tiebreaker extraordinaire, whatever it may be. I, like I said earlier, the messages just came through, and I really look forward to seeing what they have to say. Overall, though, this team is really starting to play the best baseball of the year. Four-game winning streak, one of the longest of the season. And going against Billy Baseball is something that uh, I look forward to doing. So, Billy Baseball, let's talk about you and me in the first overall matchup. You and I, we go back a long ways. We fought each other tooth and nail in both matchups this year. Once I pulled it out on a Sunday with some spot sharting by Julio Tejeron. The next time, we wound up tying because in the ninth inning, you had players going, and they brought your batting average down, and we wound up tying it up. And uh, it's just it's been a tight matchup between us all season long. We're clearly two teams built – Built for the long run and also built to, you know, go to toe to toe, toe to toe. Who would have thought a couple wills with a couple hard dings going toe? Maybe we should say going ding to ding in this matter. Will to will, will to bill. But I feel good about my team, so I'm going to predict myself to beat you in an upset six versus three. Six versus three, I'm going to predict an upset from the wild card weekend. So Will Alexander would be moving on to the next round to play the number one seed, Eva Morty which leaves it up to who's going against Bihan next week between Nelson Cruzen and Red Rooster. I don't see any way Nelson Cruzen is losing. No Nelson Cruzen losing here. Red Rooster's year to stab dog ends with a playoff flutter, which for your team, you know, like I said, playoffs is great. Oh, damn, no more flash available. Good thing I wasn't using that in the first place. Battery going low, 15%, been on it all day. You know, stat jack and just ooh, Labor Day baseball. We're back to where we're at, the Roosters. As good as I was hyping your team and as happy as you are to be in the 4C, your season is going to end right here. Rymart, one of the best teams all season. Better than a 5C in my mind. Could have been a 2C, could have been a 3C uh, if he was in a different division. I couldn't help it that he was against Bihan. Overall, though, Nelson Cruzen, you're picking up a dub this week. So in our four matchups, we've got Nelson Cruzen. He's giving Red Roosters a bruising. Will Alexander, he's going to beat No Homers Club. Steed over B. Green. And uh, Mr. Tickles, 
over Cruz and Cody. Uh, I look forward to uh, prolonging these matchups and keeping them going for the rest of this week. Hopefully they're tight, except for my matchup. I'd like to be Billy pretty handedly and just relax a little bit instead of just feverishly looking at my phone, waking up, not being able to sleep. Went to sleep at 1 last night, couldn't sleep all night, tossed and turned, finally woke at 7.18 to see 6th place, and it was just a weight temporarily lifted off my shoulder because the playoffs are here. But I know all six of the teams remaining are sporting. They got him. 17% chance to make the play, to win a World Series, to pocket that cash. Who doesn't want that money? Who wants it more? That's the question. Who wants it most? We're going to find out this week, next week, and in the third week from now. So we'll see you next week.